You are now listening to Between Us Girls, the podcast, where we discuss life's fuckeries and then some over wine. Welcome to our show. This is Michelle. And Danielle. And this is Between, Between Us, Us Girls. Girls. Woo. Yeah. We are just the two of us between us. Sarah is a bottle of what we're sipping on, which you can't know what it is yet. Let us get there. You can always find us on SoundCloud, Stitcher Radio, Google Play, and iTunes slash Apple Podcasts. Between Us Girls Podcast on Facebook. Instagram between us girls podcast and on Twitter at girl talk and wine. We do have a Snapchat real bug pod. You can see Danielle and myself with our mouths half open looking very dumbfounded most of the time because we don't know how to use it properly. Um, for a lot of, for a lot of years now, just one, <laughs> we've been hoping that, we might be able to fund our podcast with support from listeners. And if you feel like you want to support Between Us Girls, a podcast, please visit www.patreon.com backslash Between Us Girls. In the arms of For just $5 an a month, you can help Hold us tight. build a podcast. I'm making up words. You can help support podcasters. Help us. Make the podcast that you enjoy. Make a great show. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. So, what are we sipping on? Make a great show. <laughs> Get out of here. Um, we are sipping on a rosé tonight, and um, I'm not even going to attempt to. Um, Let me see it. Bella Ruche, I guess. <sighs> Is Bella Ruche? Maybe I don't know. Uh, Bella Rouche. Bella Rouche. Bella Rouche. Rosé, Cote du Rhone, and I'm not going to read the rest of it, okay. but it's by M. Chapoutier. Yeah, so um, I don't see. Oh, it's vintage 2016. And it has an alcohol content of 13.5%. Michelle, turn up. <laughs> so we're going to be rating this on um, what? Body. Finish. Finish. Taste. Um, and... Clarity? No. Yeah, I think Clarity is one of them. It's some some shit we gonna rate it on, and uh, we'll let you know at the end of the episode how it fares. Yeah, if we like it or not. If we like it or no. Is it good or no? It's been a while since I said that. Is it good or not? Is it good or no? Is it good or no? You know what? I think when we do the website, the wine, we should just call it. Is it good or no? Yeah, we we should. Is it good? Or, or no. no. Mm-hmm. And then just like list everything. Yeah. All right. So tonight we are going to discuss the topic that everyone has been waiting for. Everyone? Every, everyone. <laughs> we got to do our fan of the week first. Okay. Hold off on that. What we're going to talk about. Whenever we get done with our fan of the week, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to talk about what women want from men. Okay. Our fan of the week is Mark Lanier from the, I, I'm guessing that's how you pronounce your last name. You know what is crazy? Because the guy who owned the law firm that I worked for, his first name was Mark too. What was, is this the same guy? It's not. Oh. 
<laughs> this is not that Mark Winter. They look they look a lot different. They look Their a lot names different. Names are the same. Are they different races? Yes. Okay. What if our Mark was him in a past life? <laughs> Bye. <laughs> What if? So, okay, so this Mark is from the Emotions and Shit podcast, and he is very supportive of us. Like, he's it's just emotions and shit. Okay. Um, <laughs> You're so- right. <laughs> um, do we need to play back what you just did? What? When you talk about the wine? Oh, shut up! <laughs> or we talked about Patreon. <laughs> You y'all notice how it's okay for Danielle to sing real off key and bad as fuck, but when I start singing, she's like, "Oh my god, can you stop? You don't know how to stop, though." Oh, you go on forever. Do you not? Oh, okay. It, back to Mark, who's important at this moment in time. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> He is extremely supportive of us. Like he's always sharing, and he's he he always like hits me up and be like, "Yo, I listened," and I um he's like, "I really liked the episode," and he's he's always asking me questions and stuff or whatever. And like, I mean, it's really cool. Like he really like he gets us. Like he likes us. You that's know? cool. He's he is very supportive, and that's totally important. Yeah. So congratulations, you are. Fan of the week. <laughs> You've made it in life, son. Right. You can die now and and you won't feel like you've missed anything. Right. Jesus is like, calling you. I can go be with the Heavenly Father. You know why? Because I've been fan of the week. Yes. You can go stand on that mountain and be judged. <laughs> it's okay. How do you feel? I was fan of the week. Okay. Just before my passing, <laughs> I'm not really worried about anything that's going on up here I mean, in heaven. I'm getting into heaven, right? Like, that's all. That, I was fan of the week. I was I mean, fan like, of the week. I feel like that gives me a pass. Just before my passing, <laughs> I was living my fullest life as Between Us Girls okay. podcast fan of Full the week. life. <laughs> my fullest life. Okay. As Dude, fan of shit. the damn week. Okay, so are we ready to get into the topic? Yes. Okay, so can you read it off to me what you have? Because I <laughs> don't remember. Okay, so we're going to be talking about three things women want in a man. What a girl so, wants, what a girl needs, whatever makes you happy. Okay, yeah, I just felt like it fit. Okay, go it, it. I mean, it kind of did. Yeah, it, mm-hmm. it fit. So, like, guys, this is the episode for you. Like, so you you can find out what we want from you. This is at a high level, though. Like, I want to I wanna be specific about that. Like, you know, this is not, like, on a day-to-day basis what women want from a man. This is, like, high level, and everything sort of branches off from that. Okay, so you just don't want anybody to be like, I went home and I asked my wife if she wanted such and such and she told me fuck me because I didn't take out the trash. What you said didn't work. I mean, you still need to check out that motherfucking trash though. Like she if she told you to do that shit, you need to do that <laughs> shit. Is she your mom? Don't <laughs> partially she is. <laughs> Shit, like she gave you specific instructions. Right, and you did wrong. Exactly. Like take the trash out. Take it out. Like, take it I, out, take it out, take I don't it out. Underst- I don't understand. I tell all my kids, take it out. Wow. <laughs> Wrap it up. Take it out. Take, take it out, out, take it out, out take it out. <laughs> oh, hilarious. Okay, so what do you have on the list? Okay, so like the first one is maturity. Mm-hmm. Like, we just talked about them being like kids, though. Okay, so like you can be, you can still have like a playfulness about you. I mean, that's, that doesn't mean that you're not mature. So maturity doesn't come with age. I mean, it comes with the acceptance of responsibility. So in that, you can still have a playfulness about you. So like if you want to wrestle with your woman, that's completely okay. 
I mean, I like to wrestle sometimes. I mean, I like to run from somebody and then wrestle. What the fuck? That- These are things that I do in my spare time. Like, I don't know. I like to run from somebody and wrestle. Oh, like, okay, so like real talk. We found like, out you're a fucking damsel in distress this bitch. So uh, like real talk, like this guy that I dated once, the second date we went on, um, we went back to his house and he literally chased me around his bed. It was so fun. I mean, and then I gave it up. But... <laughs> But it was really fun. You like to pretend to be a virgin, don't you? I don't pretend to be a virgin. You are one? Yes. Okay. I mean, even though I have an 18-year-old son. Virgin Danielle? Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, like, those. It, it, it's still fun to have that playfulness right. about yourself. But, I mean, you need to be responsible. Women want somebody that is responsible. Mm-hmm. And with, respons- with responsibility comes maturity. <laughs> With great power comes great responsibility. Exactly. So, yeah, I mean, but the thing is, it's like, okay, I want you to be mature. What am I expecting you? I want you to, you know, help me with the family and household. Like, I'm expecting you to be just an adult. Right. So you need to be responsible for the things that you are responsible for. Right. Which is this family or me and you if we have no kids. I mean, but they look sometimes at that like it's so hard. It is hard because, like, why am I here? It is so scary to them yeah. to have to be responsible for, you know, because other like people. Everything is riding on your shoulders. And so I think that that's like a problem with guys thinking anyway because it's like they think that they have to take care of everything and everybody. And don't necessarily view their women as a partner. Right, right. So it, they look at us like we're another um, another child. And to, we look at them like they're another kid. Right. Instead of us both looking at each other like we're partners. Like we're partners in this. We're doing this together. Right. And so, but, and, you, and being from the South, mm-hmm. you know, it's like the man is the head of the household and, you know, he has the last say and the big piece of chicken and, <laughs> and what, the big piece of chicken <laughs> right and whatnot and that's so, what it boils down to if the kids is eating bigger pieces of chicken than you you might as well find the new home okay because you ain't shit exactly like why 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 little darnell get the big piece of chicken what nigga because you ain't shit why i got wings First of where, all, where, where's my thigh and breast at uh, why don't you ask mary jane about that like you know what like if they're sleeping around or something. Oh, okay. That's yeah. why you're not getting a big piece of chicken because you're fucking up. <laughs> is what I mean. But yeah, so. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. So like, you know, everything sort of like resting on their shoulders and, you know, they have to be the breadwinner. They have to be the one to, you know, make sure that the house is safe and be the protector of everything. Right. When, you know, that's just one aspect of that because, you know, your woman, she's also a protector of the home in a different aspect. You know, mm-hmm. she's making sure that the kids are also safe yeah. in a different aspect and maybe you're making sure that they're safe. Like, I mean, you're, you're making sure that, pe- that your family is safe from intrusion maybe right. or whatever. And then you're, and maybe the woman is making sure her kids are safe from like, colds and you know yeah. making sure that they're they're healthy you know like i mean it's still safety you right. know what i mean so it may be just like a sort of a different aspect of it yeah and and in that you're you're both working together as partners to make sure that your kids are safe but then it's so like i said it's so crazy because even though you're not looking at this wife or boyfriend or whatever whatever as a child you still kind of sometimes feel like, oh, I feel like it's an extra kid. Yeah. You know, men feel like their wives are an extra kid. Women feel like their husbands are an extra child. And it's like, how do we break down that communication to say, I need you to be my actual helpmate mm-hmm. um, rather than to feel like, I don't want to say burden because you don't want to look at your kids like a burden. But when you're raising them and they don't have no money they to are help sort nobody, of a burden because they're very, 
Needy. I mean, burden is burden is like a um, I don't. It's not harsh in the aspect in what we're talking about because I mean they are completely your children are completely dependent upon you, right? And They're I needy. actually think that your spouse should be the same way because that's actually how you submit to one another yeah. because you are completely dependent upon them for certain things or whatever. But not I mean, like you, a kid though, right? Not like a kid because you can I, I can fully function without you but i don't want to and i'm functioning with you yeah right so it's like you know back to the responsibility angle of it you know a lot, i think a lot of men shy away from being responsible because they think more so of the financial burden of it yeah and then so. they don't know whether or not that woman is going to expect everything or how she's going to be and they're like well I, that means I'm going to lose my whole entire wallet and that's not necessarily true okay so what about being decisive like how do you feel about that I mean I kind of feel like that is a really sexy just like when you can say okay this is what I want this is what I want to do and I'm going to do it you know like what irritates me the absolute most and you know this is when a guy asks me on a date and then he says, okay, so what do you want to do? Right. Motherfucker, did you not just ask me, like, why are you asking me what I want to do? So, I mean, because my thought process is you, you're you the one that's paying for this date. Mm -hmm. So you know what your pockets look like. Right. And if I suggest anything that's outside, like, how am I supposed to know what your pockets look like? Because, I mean, if I suggest, am I supposed to just automatically know? And just like, oh, well, you know, this is what, this is reasonable. And then what is reasonable? You know what I mean? Like, it's all subjective. Right. Um, I mean, and that's happened to me where I suggest a place and then a guy's like, oh, well, wait a minute, that's too much. And it's like, well, why the fuck are you asking me where I want to go? Right. You're the one who knows how much money you have to spend on it. You've asked me. That means you're paying. Right. So you need to decide what you want to spend. Like, I mean, you don't have to spend a lot of money to have a good day. What you need to do to have a good day is be decisive. Make a decision. Stick with it. I may not like it. But I will respect you if you make a decision and say, hey, this is what we are going to do. And I mean, the simplest thing to do is just to be like, you know, this is a place that I frequent. Mm. You know, I want to take you to this place that I go to all the time. I want to show I, I want you to experience it or whatever. Right. Or, you know, you can say, hey, well, if, if it's like a food date, you know, what kind of food do you like? Oh, well, I like this place that has this. They'll, you, I'm sure you'll love it. You know, let me take you here because you are you've already been there and you know how much it costs. So you should be good with it or whatever. Like, I feel like it's not that big of a deal. But I mean, outside of just like straight dating, you know, when I say when I say decisiveness, I don't mean it in a I'm the man. This is what we going to do type of shit, because you because you the man and that's what y'all gonna do it, you could get slapped like real talk what she's but, saying is that she's actually the man and <laughs> y'all gonna do what she wanted but you know it's like you need to have a vision and you need to know what it is that you want mm -hmm. and in that you be decisive about what it is that you want and then what it is that you want for us you know, like, and and make sure that I'm included in that. and don't Like just, in the long term? Yeah, like, don't just make decisions and think, oh, well, I'm, I'm doing this for us. No, 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 no. You still need to include me in on what it is that you're thinking about that's good for us. I will say it's extremely unattractive to be in a situation and have to ask the question, what are we going to do? Right. But, I, okay, so to your point of, you know, you ain't going to tell me, you the man, I, I still want you to, to make those decisions, but just talk to me about them well, so that I can be like, no, that's not what I want to do. But, okay, but like, okay, like, just just say, 
let's say you're living together mm-hmm. and like you say, say you live in an apartment and you know that your goal is to eventually buy a house, mm-hmm. right? Like that's, you've already had this discussion about, you know, where you want to be and, you know, maybe like where your finances are right now and what type of home you want to have, right? So when I say be decisive but still include me, it means don't just go and meet with a realtor and say, oh, I found us a house. I've right. decided on this for us. No, 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 no. We still need to have a discussion because, I, house, because right. I still need to live there. So you still need to include me, but you need to be able to make a decision on something. You know what I mean? Like We are so difficult. <laughs> <laughs> We're like... I want you to fucking decide. But why didn't you ask me what I wanted before you decided? That's why I don't make decisions. You, you cannot, but you can't you can't just make shit um by yourself. But you need to be able to be like, you know, this is what I want, this is what I like. Even even if it's down to like paint color. Let's you just, mean like for discussion. Like bring what you bring like to what discussion. You, as, at least bring something because it's like if you don't have any point, any opinions, any thought any decision on anything why the fuck are you here why are you here because god makes creatures in all shapes and sizes (laughs) you don't need to be here with me like if i say okay what what color paint do you think that you'd like to have well i don't know i don't care well well shit well i may as well make all the motherfucking decisions by myself fuck you like i mean i'm going extreme but (laughs) but i'm just saying like you know you need to you need to bring some opinions. You need to bring some thoughts. Like, nobody wants to feel like they are in it by themselves. by themselves. You know, because, again, it goes back to that point of why are you here? If I'm going to make all of these decisions on my own, then clearly I don't need you. Right. I don't. You 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 become a burden at this point. Yeah, and I think a lot of people, people pleasers especially, mm-hmm will not say how they actually feel because they just want to make sure that their partner, you know, is happy and satisfied and they feel like, you know, not making waves will make the person happier. But nobody really wants a person who doesn't have any opinion and any personality. Right. Because at that point it becomes, okay, so what am I doing? Because it's like I'm dating myself because I'm just asking you and you're just saying, Whatever you want to do. So it's like, yeah. you know, but then again, that's because people are fucking difficult. You want motherfuckers who want what you want, <laughs> but you want them to say they want something different so that you can have a debate to get them to want what you want. You know what? Um, I agree with you because, like, on one hand, I like people that have a different opinion than me because I like to see things from a different perspective right Mm -hmm. but then on the other end it's like why the fuck you just can't just do what i want and be quiet exactly (laughs) exactly so i mean i get that struggle i get it i get that struggle for guys but you you need to like own it though like you know this is me this is what i like you know be in that you know don't don't back down and don't compromise yourself just because, you know, somebody else is, like, trying to, like, say, you know, this is, you know, how I want to do things. No, this is what I want. Like, you need to stand up for yourself. Nobody respects anybody that don't stand up for themselves. Yeah. And and especially in a woman, um, in a male-female dynamic, because it's like, how can I even look at you to protect me? If I can't respect you and if you back, if you always backing down from me, you're a woman, right? You're definitely not going to stand up to another dude. Right. Exactly. So, I mean, yeah, no, be you. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that even with all the craziness of a woman, she still wants you to be you and to bring you to the table. Mm -hmm. like because I mean that's what attracted her in the first place is you being you and you coming maybe if let's just say you came on to her or whatever you know and she 
she was attracted to that. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you have to keep that up. But you know what? There are some people who get attracted to things, and then when they get them, they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. You, you're doing too much. <laughs> and those are the people who are, you're like, how's this real life? When you liked who I was, but now you're trying to stifle my flame. I think that if that comes to terms, then you're really probably just not even compatible. Right, right, definitely. Because... You know, nobody, anybody that is really into you and that is attracted to you and want to be around you, they're not going to try to change who Who you you are. are. And that's what's so crazy about it because it's like you could be the most flawed individual, but the person who wants to be with you, who loves you and, you know, really just is wants to invest in you is going to accept those things that you feel like no one will ever accept. They'll say, hey, look, you know, I'll take you as you are. Of course, I mean, I'm not talking about, like, beating people up and, like, hitting, you know, I'm talking about, like, regular flaws that folks are like, oh, I don't, you know, Mm -hmm. maybe I'm a little bitchy or or I don't like to clean or whatever your issue is. The person who is for you is going to say, I accept that in you because right. first of all, they're flawed too. You Everybody's know what I mean? Flawed, yeah. But I think that's where a lot of that comes in is because people are afraid to expose themselves. But you know what? I think that's why like the asshole guy wins mm-hmm. because he's like, bitch, this is me. Either you going to get on board or you not going to get on board. And I'm going to be me 24 seven. Like this is who I am. So you have no choice but either to accept it or reject it. Mm-hmm. And it's like I'm either I'm going to be here regardless whether you're here or not. Yeah. And I think a lot of people sort of need to take on that mentality without being the actual asshole. Right. Just this is me. Like not necessarily it. asshole yeah. but like just period like this is me. Right. No sugar coat, no change. And honestly, I used to be the type of person who would change to conform to whoever I was mm. with because, you know, I, I don't even want to say I have low self-esteem. I just think it was being the people pleaser. It's like I was easy. explaining. Yeah, it's easy it's to easy. just say, okay, well, you know what? I'm not going to make waves. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to be what they want. Mm-hmm. But then you're miserable. You're completely unhappy because you're not who you are. It's an easy way to manipulate somebody as well when you just be who they want to be and you can get whatever it is that you want out of somebody being that way. I never thought about doing that. I used to do that. Really? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I would would pretty much like size a guy up, like really – like we would have like a couple conversations and I would size him up. Now nowadays I really don't give a shit. Yeah. But um like I would size him up and I would figure out what it is that he likes and I would just feed him the bullshit or whatever it is that he that he liked and what he whatever it is that he wanted. You want somebody that's like attentive to you, like I'll I'll call you and we can have a conversation or whatever blah blah blah. Oh, you know, and or whatever it is that it is that you you felt like you needed if i liked you enough it felt like i could get something out of you then then i would just i would do it you You crooked bitch you (laughs) i know but it's like but you know in that it's like kind of like guys are very easy to manipulate number three is consistency i actually think that number three is like sort of the most important because so much um derives from consistency like um, trust, mm-hmm. you know, because yeah, you build that. The you more build, consistent like, that you are, you know, the more exactly, the more consistent you are. Like, because you, your words matter. So, the more you talk to somebody, the more you start to believe what they say, and then their actions start to match up. Like, you have to have that consistency. So, like, you know, your words and your actions they have to match, and. For me personally, like I I need to feel like I can depend on you, and the way that um, like I feel that way is when you are consistent in your actions. Yeah, you know, and 
and that that builds trust right along the way you know like the more that i feel like i can depend on you the more i feel like i can open up to you because you are consistent you're listening to me right like you and you're actually doing the things that i say that i like you know? right and i'll say this like okay when patrick and i first started dating this is like forever ago i thought it was so wonderful that he was extremely consistent that meant that every evening when he got off work Mm -hmm. he was calling me we were talking and every weekend he took me on a date and it was just like everything and I'm a Taurus so that means that everything was like clockwork Mm -hmm. I knew what was coming I expected it and it came and I loved that I loved that consistency Mm mm-hmm Right, because I mean that's how you and that's how you actually build the relationship up. Right. Right, with being consistent. That's why I say I think it's like the most consistency is the most important thing. Most definitely. Because like that's that's actually how you actually form the relationship. You know, because you're going out, you're talking, you're doing things together and you're doing it on a consistent basis, you know, and you feel like you can trust and you feel like you can open up, you know, and the more you feel like you can open up, the more vulnerable you can be. Right. And the more vulnerable you can be with somebody like it's like the bond is strengthened. Right. With somebody. And that's what's so weird about relationships that are not relationships, because it's like this has not been consistent for you. Yeah. So why are you in it? here in your mind Mm -hmm. when it hasn't been consistent so what has been going on that you're like this is my man we go together when you really i mean has it been consistently bullshittery has he been consistently missing like what how do you get to the point where you don't have that consistency but you form this attachment and you're sure and convinced that you know things are 100 but I think it's because, to be honest, I think that the person that is in that is straight line to themselves. Yeah. You know, because, oh, he just did, like, they're giving him passes. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, he just did this one time. And then one time turns into two times. It's like, oh, whatever, you know. Um, well, he this this happened. You know, oh, he had to go pick up his daughter. Right. And, and it's like you give this guy so many passes because of all these other things. Oh, he, I mean, people give people passes that look good day in and day out. Mm-hmm. He fine as fuck. He's a security guard or whatever. I'm sorry, f- a security guard? Yeah. <laughs> I checked out. <laughs> but he fine as hell, though. Like. And then he's a security guard. He's fine as fuck. He's a security guard. He's a security guard. guard that works at my job. He makes eighteen twenty five an hour because he's commissioned. No, oh, well you you're like high. Like I feel like they make like twelve, but but if they have a gun, they make more. Oh, okay. But you know, so like they people give passes all the time, and and they end up lying to themselves, and they end up believing their own lies. Mm. So it's like, mm, why are you lying? Right. <laughs> So it's just like, you know, oh, he said this and he said that, or I believe him or whatever, blah, blah, blah. But But the proof is right there in front of you. Everything, all these red flags just flying up and down, like, you know, and you just don't want to see it. And I think, I really believe that that's what it is. Like, you just don't want to see what's in front of your face because you want to believe that this is something real. Mm -hmm. but you don't want to think that all everything that this man or this woman has laid out for you and said this is who i am like you just don't want to believe it right and i mean that's and you can't you have no one else to blame but yourself in those situations Mm -hmm. you really don't i mean i think that we've all been victim to it You know, I mean, I can definitely say that I have at one point in time. It's like, you know, because the sex was so good. We having sex on a regular basis. Sex with me, so amazing. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) But, yeah, like, so, I mean, the sex is really good, and you really feeling this person, and you're like, you know, why wouldn't he want me? You know what I mean? Because, bitch, I'm me. (laughs) <laughs> bitch I 
I mean? I'm bitch. me. I'm fucking bitch, me. Bitch, what the fuck you I'm, mean? I'm, I'm me. fucking awesome as fuck. Like, you know why? I'm so this? awesome. I'm so, remember that song? No, I You don't? I don't. The fans, fans. Do you guys remember that song? I'm so awesome. I'm so awesome. <laughs> Hell yeah. Bitch, that was my theme song for a minute. I was it like, wasn't? I'm so awesome. I'm going to have to like First of all, like, I am it. me. Like you said, I'm me. I'm Everything me. you just said is how I feel about myself whenever <laughs> I really get full of myself. I'm like, I'm me. I'm me. Like, you know, like, why, why the fuck wouldn't you want me? I'm awesome in the motherfucker. Like, shit. Bitch, you see all this thickness right do you, here? Do you, first Bitch, of all. I'm fine as fuck. First of all, you see this mole on my forehead? <laughs> Bitch, do you know what I can do if I want to do? I could be a whole Indian if I wanted to. You you got me fucked up. But I think it's important, too, to also have that confidence. So it's like, yeah. you know, like people can talk about us for being like really full of ourselves and narcissists or whatever. But like, I'm so awesome. But I think that there's a healthy level of narcissism. I think everyone has a little bit of that too. Yeah, but yeah, I think everybody has a little bit of narcissism unless you're like a truly Debbie Downer type person or whatever, but you just can't see the good. Yeah, and, and you're really ugly. But <laughs> Damn, uh, I whispered it. <laughs> just been saying it all out. I'm like, and actually ugly. She's like, and you ugly as fuck. I mean, you ugly. And I don't look at you. But... <laughs> But yeah, so um, I think that there is a such thing as a healthy level of narcissism. Like, I really think that you need to have, like, um, confidence in yourself. And you need to feel like you need to be able to look in the mirror and be like, shit, even with this motherfucking role right here, like, I look good. And be able to just smile at yourself and say, shit, I I like me. Mm -hmm. Like, And I, I think that's a healthy level of narcissism, maybe. Or maybe that's just good self-esteem or whatever, but. Well, I think extremely high self-esteem to me is like narcissism. So if yeah. if you feel like you are the shit and can't nobody touch you, you have really extreme self-esteem. And I think when it becomes narcissism is whenever you do things that affect others, but you're not concerned about them. Yeah, I think so, when your ego sort of gets in the way right. is when it, it becomes unhealthy. Yeah, right. I would agree with that. Right, so it's like you. I can love myself all day, every day, but when I start doing things that affect mm -hmm. other people negatively, for the sake of me, right? You know, that's a problem. Yeah. So, you know, I think this was has been a pretty good discussion on what women want. Yes. So I think we should get more in depth into it when Sharonda's back, and then we can like really like dig into it mm. at some point because yeah. I feel like there are some things that maybe we didn't touch on but me and Danielle gonna do what the fuck we wanna do. Well I think that we just stuck to just a high level. Right. Of like, it. I mean because I mean because everything sort of derives from being mature, being responsible, being decisive being consistent and having that trust and dependency or whatever you know because I mean you really I, I think that those are really three things that you really need in a mate to sort of really build the foundation of your relationship, mm -hmm. you know, and men, fellas, you listening, like you just, you need to step up. You right. really just need, if you really, if there's a woman that you are looking at and you want to be with her, like you need to step up to the plate. You need to basically take responsibility like for that woman. You need to get her is what you need to do. Yeah. If this is who you're looking at, this is who you like, this is what you're into, get her. Because if you don't, she's going to be with somebody else. Because good women who have amazing qualities, you're looking at her, somebody else is guaranteed looking at her. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's, it's like... If you're not going to shit, get off the pot. Pretty much, though. Yeah. Like, don't put yourself in a friend zone. Yeah. That's a whole nother conversation. Or in the we've been together eight million years zone. 
because then you you're still in the friend zone. It's weird. It's like once you've been together like eight. No, it is. It's kind of like when you've been together a long time, you get into a zone where you're like, mm, you could be replaceable. Well, I mean, the, way, the reason why I'm kind of like iffy about that, because I don't think that marriage is necessarily go for everybody. No, and it doesn't have to be. But at least but if you act like you want to have an adult relationship. But I'm saying like, so if you're together, though, and you've been together, let's say you've been together for like 10 years, mm -hmm. you know, what's what's wrong with that being a stopping point? Nothing, because at that point, you're probably living together or whatever, mm. or at least over each other's house regularly, mm. you know, I think, I mean, I don't, and I don't even think you have to get married. Yeah. I don't necessarily think that you have to get married. I don't think that's an absolute have to. But we probably should talk about that at some point. But yeah, we yeah. can table this. Let's yeah. table it. So, how did you like the wine? So i I like rosés, but I don't think I like this one. Like it's a little. It's really dry. It tastes like rubbing alcohol. Rubbing it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I hate to say that all the time because then you guys are like, that bitch drank alcohol when she was little. But the thing is, is that like Noah did not drink rubbing alcohol when I was little. I used to drink whiskey straight. Mm. And that is just like rubbing alcohol. So when I taste a wine that tastes like straight whiskey, to me, it's like rubbing alcohol. Well, I wouldn't go as far as saying it tastes like whiskey, but... It has a musky smell to it. It tastes like rubbing alcohol. <laughs> it, I'm going to give it a 17. Give it a 17? Like, I'll give it a 15. Like, it's, it's, it's really, really dry. It's really dry. And I don't like the smell of it. And, you know, normally rosés are sort of, like, light and crisp and feel like fun or something or whatever. But if y'all could see my fucking face... <laughs> talking about some feel like fucking fun. It do. It's like you, you drink a rosé. It's like, you know, you sitting on the beach or something or a lake and you just having fun. and With a whole full ass fucking glass glass. <laughs> talking about I'm on a lake. Oh Get the fuck know. out of here. I don't know. It's you like, are so white inside. I like, think, I'm on a lake and I have wine and I have a rosé. I just, I, know, I think, I think uh, rosé and I just think summer and I just think fun or whatever. I don't know. But this one is just like mm, hard pass. Yeah, it tastes like rubbing alcohol. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a 15. Yeah. Actually, that's what I get the last wine. Fucking 15. Fuck. <laughs> what do you give it? I think I gave it a 15 too. Like oh, I said. Okay. Mm. All right. Well, head over to iTunes. Subscribe, Robert. I had some girls subscribe at the event we went to last week. It was chill. They subscribed. Why are you talking like that? Because the Warriors. Blah, blah, blah. Have you ever seen Warriors? No, I have not. Oh, that's how she does. She, like, talks real sexy into the microphone. Anyway, oh, is go that what on that over to... Leave me alone, bitch. <laughs> Leave me the fuck alone. Okay. Okay. So go to our iTunes, subscribe, and leave us a review. Yeah, that's all I have to say about that. Bye. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on Between Us Girls. But don't keep it a secret. Listen and share with everyone you know. See you next week.